Hello, welcome to this class where we're going to discuss how to manipulate files and directories. Specifically, we're going to cover the cp command, also mv, mkdir, rmdir, touch, and rm commands. Okay, so let's initiate with the cp command. If we take a look at the cp help, we can see that its structure is very simple. CP, if you need to is, use options, then you have the options. And the source, which is the file or directory that you're copying and where you're copying it to. Observing this second line right here, that after source, I have the three dots. That, that means that I can copy more than one file at a time as long as I'm copying those files to the same destination, to the same directory. Okay, so let's initiate here by using an example. I have these two files, test and testing. The very basic way that I could use the cp command would be cp, the file that I want to use or I want to copy, in this case, test, and I also want to copy testing. Where are they going to? Okay, let's say that I want to copy them to the documents directory, subdirectory. There you go. And observe here that I'm using a relative path. If I wanted to use a absolute path, that would be okay. I can as I simply have to type in my absolute path. Okay, so I want to copy it to slash TMP. There you go. How do I know that I'm using a absolute path here? Because my path, my destination, begins with the slash symbol. If I list the content of slash TMP, there, those two files are right there. Okay, so that's a very simplistic way of using CP. Now, CP has some options that may help you copy files or specifically directories when needed. So let me take a look here. I have the documents directory. And inside the documents directory, I have a copy of the test and testing files, which are copies originated from these two right here. So, if I want to copy not only test and testing files that reside in the documents directory, but the entire documents directory itself to, let's say, slash TMP, there, it's not going to work. Why does it, doesn't it work? Because to copy a directory, I have to make a recursive copy. What does it mean? The recursive copy will first copy the files that reside in that directory or subdirectory and then the directory. I cannot only copy the directory itself. And to do so, I use the minus R option. So cp minus R documents, it's going to go to slash TMP. Now it worked. If I list the content of slash TMP, I can see my documents directory in there. Now, I want to copy the test and testing files to the root directory, slash root directory. Well, I can't because I'm a regular user. I'm not the super user and only the super user can, can get access to the slash root directory. That's the super user's personal directory. Therefore, I can use the sudo command and it it works. Why does it work? Because the sudo command allows me to run a command as the super user. So basically, when I do this, sudo ls slash root is the same as logging in as the super user as root and then type typing ls slash root. Okay, so let's copy oops, the test file to the 
root directory slash root directory there it is let's do something similar with the testing file but I'll pass the minus a option to the cp command well it worked just the same way however let's see the result There. Observe here that the test file belongs now belongs to the root user and to the root group user, whereas the testing file belongs to user and user. What is the difference there? Why did the minus a option impact in that manner? The reason is when I copy a file and I don't use the minus A option, I'm copying a file that will belong to the user that is implementing that copy. So when I did sudo cp space test space slash root, I'm making this copy, I'm running this command as the super user, which is the root user. So the system will understand that that file will belong to the user that is running the command, which is the root user. Therefore, root is going to be the owner of the, this file right here. When I copy the file with the minus A option, I'm saying I want to preserve, I want to maintain the original characteristics, the original information, the original inode structure, that is assigned to that file. So originally, this file belongs to the user user. Therefore, when I run this copy here, it's going to maintain this inode structure here, this information. As a result, this is what I get. The testing file belongs to, the, to its original owner, whereas the test file belongs to the user that is copying that file. You may also use another interesting option that you have available is minus i. Basically, what it does is it's going to ask you a question. It's going to confirm whether you want to proceed with that operation or not. I can simply answer yes or no. Whereas if I use the minus F option, I'm forcing that operation. So with the minus E, the system is going to wait for a feedback, for an answer. With the minus F, I'm forcing it. Doesn't matter if that file already exists and it's going to be overwritten, that's okay, it will happen. Now, the cp command is used to copy files. I also have a command to remove files, which is rm. Basically, I can just do rm and the file name. If I want to delete a directory, so let's go back to the slash tmp and I have here a copy of my document subdirectory. If I try to remove that slash tmp desktop subdirectory, oops, not desktop, documents subdirectory, nope, it's not going to work. Why not? Because to remove a director or subdirectory, I have to first remove its content. Well, it may be very troubling if you have a directory with many, many files and many, many subdirectories, it's just unfeasible. What you can do here is to use the minus R option. And then it's going to remove that entire structure. There you go. So the slash TMP directory is still there. 
but not this the documents subdirectory. That one is gone. Sometimes the system may ask you whether you really want to continue with that operation or not. Similarly to the CP command, the RM command also have the minus F option, which stands for force. So it doesn't matter what's going to happen. If you do minus RF, everything inside that directory is going to be removed. The system is not going to ask you. It's just going to do it. So you have to be very careful when you use the RAM command with, with the minus RF options. Now, in order to practice these commands, you're going to need some files. Obviously, you can use the files that you already have in your system, but let's say you want to create a new file and start from there. So I'm going to remove my testing file and I'm going to create a new one with the same name. And similarly to the other commands, touch allows you to use more than one parameter. So if I want to create two files at once, that's what I can do. And observe here that these files, they were created, but they have no content. If we take a look at their size, zero, they're empty. And from here, you can start working with CP, RM. But wait, if I create a file with the touch command, it's creating a regular file, right? Not a directory. What if I want to create a directory? For that, you have to use the mkdir command. So mkdir, let's say class one, and we can see it in blue. That means that it's a directory. What if I create, want to create a structure in there? Inside class one, I want to create class 2, and then class 3. Oh, didn't work. Why not? Because what I'm doing here is I'm trying to create a subdirectory inside class 2, but class 2 does not exist yet. One option would be after creating class 1, I would create class 2, and then in a separate command, I would create class, class 3. What if I want to do it all at once? That's perfectly fine. You can use mkdir, but with the minus p option. Let's create another one here. And there you go. Remember that if you want to see its structure, you can use the ls with the minus capital R option. And there it is. So inside class 1, I have class 2. Inside class 2, I have class 3. Inside class 3, I have class 4. Observe here that if I want to create a hierarchy structure, such as this one, you have to separate the directories and subdirectories by the slash symbol. It's not a space symbol. If you, if you use a space, you're going to create different separate directories. What I mean is, if I use the same command, even with the minus P option, but I do this, space class 2, space class 3, space class 4. What happened there? Let's take a look at it. Now I have class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, in my current directory. Here they are. So whenever you use spaces in a command, you're giving it different parameters. They are not aligned. They are not dependent. The parameters are not dependent. They are just separate parameters that you're passing to the command. Now, if I want to remove that structure, I have, I have the rmdir command. rmdir 
class one. Well, nope, didn't work. If I try to remove class two, and let's say class three and class four, it's going to work. However, what are these directories that I'm removing? Let's take a look at it. If we go back here, we may remember that we created separate directories in my current directory. So inside my slash home slash user directory, I created class one, class two, class three, class four. Those are the ones that I removed. So I removed class two, class three, and class four. You don't see those here anymore. However, class one is there. And let's take a look at the content of class one. The subdirectories are still there. Class two, inside class two, we have class three. Inside, inside class three, we have class four. Now, once again, let me go back here and try to remove class one slash class two slash class three slash class four. It did work. Well, not quite. It did remove class four. It's not here anymore. However, class two and class three are still there. And I want to remove this whole structure. I want to remove from class one to class four. Well, to class three now. Similarly to the mkdir command, I can use the minus p option here. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to remove the class four here. There you go. Now, if we list our current directory, I cannot even see class one anymore. This whole structure here is gone. Okay, so these are some very basic commands that allow you to manipulate files and directories. And we have to really understand and know how to use those commands. Thank you for watching. See you in our next class.